quick question is whether any knowledge obtained from general revelation is self is adequate to result in salvation. This is asking whether we can be saved by believing God revealed through general revelation apart from believing in Jesus Christ. What is general revelation? God's general revelation derives from the same two sources that provide data for natural theology. Now, there's also a third, God's providence seen throughout history, but we're not going to talk about that much in this course. So, outwardly, it drives from nature, and inwardly, it stems from conscious. The psalmist says in Psalm 19, verse 1 through 2, The heaven declared the glory of God, the sky proclaimed the work of His hand. Day after day, they poured forth speech, and night after night, they reveal knowledge. So that is from the creed order. Now, Paul actually affirms this in his epistle to the Romans. He says, For what can be known about God, about God, is plain to them, because God has shown it to them, people of the world. Verse 20, For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived, clearly seen, ever since the creation of the world, in the thing that have been made. So they, people in general, are without excuse. As alluded in chapter 3, these passages indicate that certain knowledge of God can be obtained rationally by observing the created world alone. So I think this is why agnostic astronomers, people who study the stars and planets have had a hard time categorically rejecting God's existence. A considered case of Paul Davies, an agnostic mathematical physicist who later became a deist, a believer of God. Not biblical God, but at least he began to believe in a creator God. In an article entitled Taylor Made Universe, Taylor Made Universe, this physicist confessed, quote, it looks like somebody made the universe. I don't think it was made, but it sure looks that way, end of a quote. In his later work, a book called The Mind of God in 1992, Davis wrote, quote, The universe looks as if it is unfolding according to some plan or blueprint. These look as if they are the product of intelligent design. I don't see how that can be denied. And after that, he became a deist. So it is kind of hard for astronomers to stay atheists studying the orderliness of the universe. The knowledge about God attained innately refers to God's law written in the human heart. So this is the second component to general revelation. Besides God's created order outside, there's also one inside. It's called God's law written in the human heart. Paul writes, this is Romans chapter 2, verse 14 through 15, for when Gentiles who do not have the law, meaning Mosaic law given to the Jews, when the Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do what the law requires, they are law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the work of the law is written on their heart, while their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thought accuse or even excuse them. Did you notice that phrase? God's law written on their heart, conscious. Now, since God's laws are written on the heart, conscious of the people, it can be argued that humans are born with a basic sense of what is right and wrong. Accordingly, the conservative theologian Herbert Cain made a following comment, quote, The heathens have neither the light of the law nor the light of the gospel, but they do have the light of conscience which is by no means a perfect instrument and it can be abused to the point where it fails to function properly, but conscience still remains the divine monitor within the human breast." End of a quote. This is why, while each group, tribe, appears to have its own set of mores, certain fundamental moral values persist across all groups, whether you are in Africa or in Australia. This, I believe, is called conventional morality. This is to say, certain mysteries everywhere and any time continue to evoke a strong societal 
disapproval. For example, incest in the primary relationship, torturing babies, rape, gratuitous killing like Holocaust, stealing, particularly when the rich rob the poor, just to name a few. Why? Well, reason for this is obvious. The gracious God instituted conventional morality among all people, including those who do not believe in Him, so that it can function as moral restraint to keep societies from becoming disorderly and unsafe. So it is another indicator pointing to God's love and concern for the world, even though that very world, much of it has long rejected God the Creator. The common morality, valid regardless of time and place, then becomes a powerful tool to prove the existence of God. All right, then what is the outcome of general revelation? Simply put, the result of people's ability to access general revelation is the belief that God exists. German anthropologist Wilhelm Schmidt reports, quote, the supreme being is found among all the peoples of the primitive cultures, not indeed everywhere in the same form or same vigor, but still everywhere prominent enough to make his dominant position without a doubt. So that's the result of uh, general revelation when it's accessed by people that there is a supreme being. But there's a limit to this general revelation accessible to all. Talking about the limits of general revelation, it is to actually talk about its purpose. Earlier it was asked whether any knowledge obtained from God's general revelation is adequate to lead to salvation. The answer is no, because salvation is not the purpose of general revelation, although it is designed to play an important role toward salvation. So what then is the purpose of general revelation? Recall what Paul told the pagan Athenians first time he visited that city, and there's a picture of Paul talking to the Athenians. They're pagans, right? After saying, among other things, this is Acts 7 to 24 following, God made the world and everything in it. In other words, Paul began with natural theology to Athenians who did not have the Old Testament and did not have any concept. So he began with natural theology, God made the world and everything in it. And then verse 27, Paul says to Athenians, God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Acts 17, 27. Now ESV says that they should seek God, pagans should seek God, perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Now, cursory reading of this word seems to suggest that it is possible to find God, salvation, through a reasonable observation of the created world. Again, Acts 7 to 27. For God did this, you know, created the world, among other things, so that man would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he's not far from each one of us. That, however, is not what this verse actually says. Note that the phrase, feel the way, ESB, derives from the Greek word, Selefao, which means, according to the Greek expert Spiro Zoriates, quote, feeling on the surface, feeling for or after an object without actual coming in contact with it at all. So you're not touching the surface. You're not touching God at all. So this verb does not suggest coming in actual contact with God. Close, but not close enough to meet Him personally. Furthermore, the Greek verse for feel, as in their way toward God, and find God, are used in the rare optative mood. Now there are four moods in Greek, optative mood is rarely used, express a wish, including those wishes that are not possible to fulfill. This optative mood refers to, for instance, a daughter wishing to spend Thanksgiving with her father even though he had been dead for years. It's a wish for thinking that is not realizable. Now, note that these two Greek verbs are not used in the indicated mood, which, according to Ray Summers, Greek expert, confirm the reality of the action from the viewpoint of the speaker. 
in this case, that would be Paul. This suggests that finding God, being saved, through general revelation of the created order alone is not part of our reality. But it can certainly lead us to believe that God exists. But that's knowledge about God. But that is not equal to knowing God. What is essential during this process is the role played by the other half of God's general revelation given to all humanity. Recall Romans 2.14 requirements of the law written on human heart, conscious. The fact of the matter is that whether God's law written on human heart, accessible to anyone and everyone, or God's written law made first accessible only to the Jews, their purpose is the same. Romans 3.20, through the law we become conscious of sin. And since all have sinned, Romans 3.23, and it only takes one sin to become a lawbreaker, James 2.9, God's law written on every human heart can elicit consciousness of sin that may lead people to actually seek God. So there is a very important role that God's law written on a heart plays, but keeping those laws will not lead to salvation because nobody keeps it 100%. In summation, the Apostle Paul wishes that pagans are led to God through general revelation, which prompts them to recognize God's existence as well as their own sinfulness, so that they are ready to embrace, believe Christ when the gospel is presented to them, which is actually why Paul was in Athens anyway, to preach the gospel to bring them to salvation.